Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to attempt to find the temperatures on both sides of the window pane using the same conditions as we did in the previous videos, where the temperature inside is 20 degrees centigrade, the temperature outside is 0 degrees centigrade. The conditions of the window pane, it has one square meter. The, diff the thickness through which the heat has to travel, the conductivity path is 0.5 centimeters. The conductivity constant is 0.8 watts per meter per centigrade degree. And now, depending upon the constants, let's see here, we still need the uh, transfer constant for convection on the outside. So let's say that that's equal to 10, uh, let's call it watts per square meter per centigrade degree. And let's say that the heat, con the heat uh, transfer constant on the inside is equal to 5 watts per square meter per centigrade degree. Based upon those values, what will be the temperature on the inside surface and the outside surface of the glass? Wow, where do we even start? Well, it turns out we can rely on one thing. The amount of heat transferred through the air on the inside, through the glass, and through the air on the outside must be constant. It's kind of like the current through any resistor when they're in series must be the same. The water flow through any hose must be the same everywhere within the hose or the pipe, regardless of the cross-sectional area. So therefore, we can say that the heat flow through the outside air must equal the heat flow through the glass must equal the heat flow through the inside air. That we can be sure of. And because of that, we should be able to figure out the difference in the temperature on the outside in terms of the difference of the temperature on the inside and the difference of the temperature across the glass. So these are the three things we're trying to find. The difference in the temperature on the outside, the difference of the temperature on the inside, and the difference of the temperature across the window pane. So let's use these two first. Let's go between these two and we can say that uh, Q on the outside can be said the delta T on the outside divided by that would be 1 over the conductivity constant or the transfer constant on the outside times the cross section area must equal the delta T on the inside divided by 1 over the heat transfer constant on the inside times the cross-sectional area. Then right away we can see that we can get rid of the cross-sectional areas because they're the same and then we can write that the delta T on the outside times H on the outside equals the delta T on the inside times H on the inside. In other words, we could then say that the delta T on the outside is equal to the delta T on the inside times the ratio of H sub I divided by H sub O. Those are the transfer constants on the inside and the outside. And so therefore, this is equal to the delta T on the inside times H sub I would be 5, H sub A O would be 10. And so that means that the delta T on the outside is equal to 1 half the delta T on the inside. Let's see if I got that right. Delta T on the outside, inside, outside. Yes. Okay, so that's good. Now the next thing we're going to do is do the same thing, but now we're going to compare the outside to the glass. So we can say that the delta T on the outside divided by 1 over H sub O times the cross section area must equal the delta T of the glass divided by L divided by K times the cross sectional area. And here again, we know that the cross sectional areas cancel out. And so we can say that the delta T on the outside times H sub O is equal to the delta T of the glass times uh, K of the glass divided by L. And so we can say that the delta T on the outside equals the delta T on the glass times what ratio? It will be K divided by L times H sub O. Plugging in those numbers, we can say that delta T on the outside equals delta T in the glass times K is 0 0.8, L convert to meters is 0 0.0 0.005 and h sub o that would be 
10, right? All right, 10. There we go. Okay. With a calculator, 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.005 divided by 10 equals 16, which means that the delta T on the outside is equal to 16 times the delta T through the glass. Okay, one more thing that we can say, of course, is that the sum of all the delta T's, the delta T on the outside, plus the delta T in the glass, plus the delta T on the inside, must add up to the total delta T of 20 centigrade degrees. And then, what we can do then is, let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse these equations. What I would like to do is write this as the delta T on the inside. The delta T on the inside will therefore be twice the delta T on the outside. So let's do that. And here, the delta T of the glass, the delta, well, let me not get too messy here. The delta T on the glass is equal to 1 16th the delta T on the outside. So now I'm going to make these two substitutions in my equation. So we have the delta T on the outside plus the delta T of the glass is 1 16th the delta T on the outside plus the delta T on the inside is twice delta T on the outside. The outside equals 20. So adding all that together, that would be 3 plus 1 16th times delta t on the outside equals 20 and that allows us to find what delta t on the outside is so 3 plus 1 divided by 16 and we divide that into 20 and we get 6.53 degrees so delta t on the outside is 6.53 degrees or centigrade degrees centigrade degrees all right so once we have that we can then calculate the delta t on the inside so delta t on the outside is 6.53 centigrade degrees the delta t on the inside is equal to twice the delta t on the outside which is two times 6.53 degrees which is 13.06 uh, degrees or centigrade degrees, I should say, centigrade degrees. And finally, delta T of the glass is equal to 1 16th delta T on the outside, which is equal to 1 16th, 6.53 centigrade degrees. And now realize that the difference in the temperature across the glass is going to be a very minute amount. So divided by 16 is 0.41. So the delta T across the glass is only 0.41 centigrade degrees. So there's one, there's the other, and there is the third centigrade degrees. So now you can see that the vast majority of temperature differences in the air leading towards the glass from the inside of the room, towards the glass, from the outside of the glass, towards the outside, farther away from the glass, and that only a very small temperature difference occurs across the glass itself. Which explains something that I've always wondered about, because I used to live in some very cold climates where the outside temperature would be well below zero Fahrenheit, 20, 30 degrees below zero Celsius and there was ice on the inside of the glass against the glass and I always wonder why would the the moisture of the air from our breath at night freeze up against the window when it's 20 degrees inside 20 degrees Celsius inside the room why would the glass itself feel so cold and you can see that in this case under these parameters if it's 20 centigrade degrees on the um, on the inside let's see what would be the temperature well it's 13.6 uh, below 20 here, so let's write that down. So 20 minus 13.06, that would be equal to, uh, let's see, that would be 6.94 uh, 
degrees centigrade. So on the inside, the window would be 6.94 degrees centigrade. On the outside, we take another 0.41 away. On the outside, the temperature would be 6.53 degrees centigrade. So you can see that if the, if the temperature outside falls well below zero degrees centigrade, the temperature on the inside, on the surface of the window, can drop well below freezing, and that's why things will freeze on the inside of the window when it gets very cold on the outside. It finally makes sense when I see those numbers, and that is how it's done.